We interrupt these last days in the dissolution of our society to bring you this important word from our creation. But before we do, I want to give you a heads up uh, on the video I posted yesterday from InfoWars, which is really a must-see. It really is. Uh, talking about what's going down in our uh, world right now um, as far as the uh, worldly governments and so forth. So uh, it's something we can't ignore. And uh, as I go through this Bible in one year, I'm going to be uh, applying it to present-day situation. Okay, so we're up to chapter 4 here. So continuing in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, Adam knew his wife. She conceived her first son. His name was Cain. It says he was a tiller of the ground in verse 2. And she had a second son named Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now this is interesting. Both Cain and Abel knew, without evidently without anybody having to say anything, that they had to have that relationship with God. So, in verse 3 it says, In the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground, the thing that you know Cain was into, which being a farmer and growing, that, there wasn't much else to do, I guess, at that point. Uh, and he brought the fruit of the ground that he had been working as an offering unto the, unto the Lord. Abel, uh, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. Now, how long Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel had been on the earth at, by this time, it doesn't say exactly. Um, I'm thinking at this point, it was a few years. Okay. So, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground as an offering unto the Lord, and Abel, he also brought of his firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance falling? Now this is extremely interesting. Um, it's it would seem here that Cain looked at Abel's success and thought, man, I'm left out. And there might have uh, arose a little bit of envy or resentment between Cain and Abel at that point. But God says, Cain, you know, you're accepted just like Abel. If you'll just do well, you'll be accepted. In verse 7, or excuse me, verse 6, And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? And so he could tell he was upset and he was angry. And he said, If you do well, shalt not thou be accepted? Verse 7, And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. So the beginning of sin and, and, and murder is anger and resentment and hatred. Satan had the... Had the uh, People say Satan fell because of pride, but I say Satan uh, yeah, fell of a form of pride, which is the same thing that Cain had, kind of a, an envy. There's a slight difference between envy and pride. Envy is kind of a resentment of what your neighbor has and thinking that, hey, I'm just as good and I deserve what they have, the success that they have, you know. Well... So God, uh, Satan looked at God and said, you know, I can, he's got, he's the, yeah, he's God, but I, I can run this kingdom. I can make my own kingdom. What do I need God for? I want to run my own kingdom. I'm God. And uh, he was created a very powerful and beautiful uh, archangel, I believe the scriptures teach. Uh, and it kind of went to his head, so to speak, and he started thinking he could be God just as a lot of people today who are following Satan think they don't need God, they can be God on their own. And we all have that fallen tendency to believe we don't need to have God run our lives. We can run our own lives. Well, it's not true. We do need God to run our life every moment of our life. Okay, so verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field, 
that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. So here we have a record of the first homicide committed on planet Earth, at least in this incarnation of planet Earth. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Now this is this is shocking, his reply. Just the arrogance and the, 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 the cavalier attitude he has here. He says, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? So this is someone who's never been disciplined much in his life. Um, here he is talking to God this way. I don't know. I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Well, in the heart of God, he wants us to be each other's keeper. Yeah, I believe you. we are our brother's keeper. Okay. But because we had already received that selfish fallen nature when we disobeyed God in chapter 2, um, we have... Uh, uh, and Satan is now the ruler of the world, not God. We have the selfish, arrogant, uh, prideful, sinful uh, nature that is prone to anger, hate, bitterness, um, destruction, misery, um, and foolishness, you know. So, verse 10, or excuse me, verse 9, the Lord said to King, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? Verse 10, and he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now thou art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Wow. Uh, it goes on to say in the book of Leviticus, I believe, that the uh, the life of a human being is in the blood, and blood is symbolic of of our lives, uh, spiritually as well. And that's why you'll always hear Christians talk about the blood of Christ. Why is it so important? That's why Christ's crucifixion was important. He shed his blood. He gave his life that we might have life. By believing in him, he became the propitiation. In other words, he stood in our place as a and paid the penalty of of sin for us. What was that penalty? He received the curse of the earth, the crown of thorns, and he was crucified and he had to die a suffering death. He felt pain and the pain of death. He suffered on our behalf and we can escape the second death by believing in him the book of Revelation tells us. And uh, Christ himself said, whoever believes in me shall not die, but have everlasting life. So uh, God lays out the consequences of what Cain did to, to him in verse 11. And now thou art cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. So he had, he was a farmer, so thorns and thistles were already around there. He had, a, Cain himself specifically had a further curse here uh, where where uh, his the earth wasn't going to yield her strength to him. So he probably was had to work very, very hard just to maintain, uh, just to survive and maintain a barrier bare bones existence and then he was going to be banished from the rest of human society it says in verse 12 when thou tillest the ground it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength a fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth verse 13 Cain said unto the Lord my punishment is greater than I can bear Verse 14, Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face, from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that every one that finds me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. So the, the Lord said, Okay, yeah. Uh, Cain, if anybody does that, they're going to pay. So 
he set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So there might be other people saying, oh, Cain, what'd you do? You killed your brother? We're going to kill you. And the Lord said, no, no, it doesn't work like that. I'm his judge, not you guys. And we got to remember that. Anger is not good. And that's something I've really struggled with in my life. Um, when you want to get angry at somebody and judge somebody else, um, it's, good, it's good to take a breath. It's good to ask the Lord to forgive you of that and, and, and turn it over to God. And it's good when you get mad at somebody for doing something wrong to you, remember, you know, take a look in the mirror. You've probably done the same thing or worse to others. You know, Forgive and we shall be forgiven, it says. That's what Jesus said. So we got to strive to do that and, and steer away from anger. Now, there's a time when you reprove people for what they're doing wrong and, and anger is appropriate, but those, those uh, times are few and far between. Okay, and you have to be guided by the Lord as to when anger is an appropriate response to anybody doing something. Okay, you can't just fly off the handle at the drop of a hat so to speak, okay. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Now Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden. Now here Cain is went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, Nod N-O-D, Nod, I guess it is, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, so he was able to find a wife. Okay, the question comes at this point from people, and rightly so, where did their wives come from, okay? We don't know. Things were extremely different at this point on the earth. So it probably was, you know, they probably were still all related. Okay, so this is uh, many years after the initial creation, but still at this point, um, incest was not a thing, okay? The earth and the way they thought and the way things uh you know, were done back then it was entirely different than what were, uh, you know, the New Testament had not arrived, so it was entirely di Conditions were different. Okay, just like um, previous lifetimes and previous earths that might have existed, conditions were probably different. Okay. As um, far as I know, there's no dinosaurs running around today, but the fossil record seems to indicate they did at one time. Okay, so things change, and things can change drastically. Okay, if there's one lesson you learn from Genesis is how drastically things can change in a short amount of time. So verse 18, or verse 17 says that Cain found a wife, and he built a city. So Cain went on to, even though he he's banished, he's making a life for himself, apart from God, outside of Eden, and he went as far as building a city. Now, I wonder what they, at this point, what what comprised a city. Maybe he just built some dwellings and said, me and my family, we're going to live here, and other people want to come here and live here. They, you know, they could stay with us here, or what? I don't know. But it says he built a city, and he called the name of the city after the name of his son, they were both called Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Mehujael, and Mehujael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. That's verse 18, verse 19. Lamech took unto him two wives, the name of one was Ada, and the name of other Zillah. And Ada bare Jabal. He was the father of of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. So the, the natural thing would be uh, an agrarian lifestyle, of course. That was the f first job God gave to man, so it was natural that they would do that. But he had brothers who did other things. Uh, his brother Jubal, he was the father of all such as handle the harp and the organ. So the idea of music and making instruments and music and uh, People say we get our word jubilation from this guy's name, Jubal. So whenever there's a celebration, you know, music and dancing and so forth, we say it's a jubilation. 
Well, we get that from this guy here, Jubal, mentioned in verse 21. And the second wife, Zillah, so already we see things are different. A guy had not just one wife, he had two wives. Okay, so, um, and there's no mention here that it was wrong to do that at this time. So, they're marrying, they're intermarrying with themselves. They're having multiple wives. I mean, things were much different back then. And Zilha, she bare Tubal Cain. Okay, interesting, very interesting name. So she's taking the name of an ancestor of his grandfather and putting it in his, giving him the same name with a little prefix, Tubal Cain. Now I looked up the meaning of the word of the name Tubal Cain says here he's an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron so the beginning of industry uh things of non-agrarian nature uh, digging minerals out of the earth and making stuff out of them uh it's beginning here okay um uh, and it says tubal cain had a sister named naama okay so tubal cain tubal meant uh the idea of Tubal Cain is that the name gives the idea that he's someone who's carrying on the the lifetime or adding spice to and making better the life of Cain. So Cain's probably still alive at this point. And here he has a grandson and his name is Tubal Cain. He became the first guy to start working with metal. Okay. And Lamech, then Lamech had a hassle with somebody, it says in verse 23, Lamech said unto his wives, Adah and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of the Lamech, and hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. You know, most of the time when you get mad at somebody and you strike out against them, you end up hurting yourself as much or more than you do them. So it doesn't pay to just lash out in anger, folks. It just doesn't. And it's not the of the spirit of the Lord to lash out in anger. That's not God's way. If somebody's really messing with you, hand it over to God and let him be the judge. Let him be the ruler and let him be the referee, so to speak. And it's hard to do because a human nature wants to... Uh, wants, wants vengeance. God says, vengeance is mine. Okay, so he wants, God says, let me handle it. Okay, you just, you forgive and I'll forgive you. Okay, so let's not be self-righteous. Let's not deal with blind anger, unrighteous anger, because that's not going to get us anywhere. And Adam and Eve are still living, folks. It says they lived over 900 years, so. So they're still alive. In verse 25 it says, Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, she said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Now, Seth as, is very symbolic. Abel is very symbolic. Uh, in, I don't know which book, it might have been, was it Hebrews? It talks about Cain and Abel, how that Cain represents people who are righteous upon the earth, and excuse me, Abel represents people who are righteous on the earth and have faith toward God, and Cain represents the natural man who, who tries to find his, he doesn't have faith in God, but rather tries to have faith in himself and thinks he can direct his own life. So there's a difference between the righteous and unrighteous people right from the beginning here. And so it's interesting what she says. Uh, God said she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel whom came to slew. So she, she saw him as a replacement for Abel. And Seth, to him also there was born a son. And he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Okay, so... That's an interesting statement right here in the last verse here of chapter 4. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Because, so that, that kind of implies that up to this time they were just kind of 
living their lives and saying, yeah, God's there and God's the one who made us. But they weren't too concerned about God. They're, the focus of their life was just getting getting, getting along, surviving, you know, eat, uh, um, waking up each day, eating and going to bed, you know, just wandering around and doing whatever they were doing, playing music with Jubal or whatever, you know. Things haven't changed much in all these thousands of years, have they? Okay, guys, we're going to see you next time. That's the end of Chapter 4. And hopefully we're going to make some further progress. Um, we're coming up to the flood of Noah here and very soon. So we'll see you next time. Remember, uh, diversity is weakness. And when in doubt, vote no. Thanks for joining. See you next time. Bye.